Radio Center 4. Her Majesty's Queen of the Court of Victorian Splendor, Mary Elizabeth of the House of Pryor. Order of the Alamo President Edward Hodge III crowned the Queen in ceremonies at the Convention Center Arena. The 22-year-old Fiesta Queen is a graduate of St. Mary's Hall and will graduate next month from the University of Texas with a major in general business. The Queen is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Ike T. Pryor. Now, you've known since August. Mm -hmm. Who... Who did you run out and tell right away? Well, I really couldn't. You As a matter of fact, the, uh, it has the, to be a uh, secret, doesn't it? It does. And the princess, after they ask the princess, she calls you up and tells you that that she's a princess and and uh, she's one of my very good friends. And she called me up and and uh, pretended like she was just calling for fun, and mm -hmm. I couldn't even tell her. Oh. So, well, could she tell you? She finally that, told me. Yes, that, that but she was she, princess. Mm -hmm. This year's princess is Liza Billups the Princess of Sovereign Europe. She's the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. James S. Billups. And Elizabeth and Liza have been friends a long time. Elizabeth, or E.P., as her friends call her, loves softball and plays shortstop on a girls' team. Mary Elizabeth Pryor, a queen of fiesta. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. This is one of the final rehearsals of Broadway Babies, a musical review to be presented the next four Saturday afternoons by the Saltines. It's a birthday production celebrating the group's first year. No doubt about it, these kids have a lot of talent. Their show opens tomorrow at the San Antonio Little Theater in San Pedro Park. Showtime, 2 o'clock. Its director is Phil George. He told me there are 38 in the show, ranging in age from 6 to 16. At this rehearsal, Tom Hardaway, the musical director, was not present to lend piano accompaniment, but these troopers didn't seem phased. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, That's Harrison McEldowney. He's five, choreographer for the group. There are some good laughs in this production. Julie Blaze, who co-founded the Saltines, along with director George, does a comic Gypsy Rose Lee number. She's just too much woman for these chorus boys. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ever wonder what happens to currency when it wears out? We came to the Federal Reserve Bank today to find out. Once the San Antonio Federal Reserve Branch receives paper currency that is not fit for further circulation, holes are punched in it, it's cut in two, and pulverized. It ends up like a powder. Security measures are taken in each of the steps involved. Two or more persons are present, counting the pieces as they go from one step to the other. A dollar bill lasts about 11 to 12 months. Larger bills enjoy a longer lifespan. The local branch is destroying more currency now than in the past, partly due to inflation, but economist Maria Davis said there are other reasons. Uh, our population is much larger. Business and business transactions have grown measurably, particularly in this area of South Texas. Uh, moreover, we have quite a bit of activity between the two countries. Here we are near, very near the border, and a lot of our currency goes back and forth to and from Mexico. Federal Reserve Bank approved companies put the pulverized paper to use commercially. It's used in roofing shingles and mixed with oil well drilling mud. Now you have an idea what happens to the bills after they are worn out. This represents, oh, probably a million dollars, I would say. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. This plasticized sulfur mix, known as Sulflex, has no petroleum-based additives. It is an asphalt substitute used in building and maintaining roadways. It could result in an annual savings of over $4 billion, which would have otherwise gone to foreign oil-producing countries. Developed and tested at Southwest Research Institute, Sulflex uses 80% sulfur and non-petroleum hydrocarbon additives. It is being laid in one-and-a-half-mile test strips on Loop 1604 near Babcock Road. This is the world's first stretch of public highway to be paved with Sulflex. The test is jointly sponsored by the Texas Department of Highways and Public Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration. Dr. Gerald Love with the Federal Highway Administration was asked about the availability of sulfur for use in making Sulflex. Over the long term, we think that there will be more than an adequate supply of sulfur to meet our needs in the event we have to go that way for its use as a paving material. By the end of the year, there will be other Sulflex test strips laid down in seven other states. But this one is the first. This one in Texas. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. Faye Yates, gospel singer, housewife, and mother, does her Christian ministry through her singing, a talent she said the Lord gave her. At the age of six, she sang her first solo in church. She has recently had her first record album release. Faye and her husband Richard have two children, five-year-old Autumn and four-month-old April. The Yates are members of the Castle Hills Baptist Church. Um, taking care of my family is number one my church obligations I'm obligated uh, in the choir and in several choirs and um, active in uh, like if they have musicals and and drama and that sort of thing in my church I, I consider that one of my priorities um, and, and I believe that if God calls you to do something then he expects you to be loyal and faithful to that calling whatever it is as a member of the Bear County Hospital Chaplain's Assistance Program, that calling included visiting patients. In her home, she holds a weekly prayer fellowship with neighbors. When April was born and diagnosed as a Down syndrome baby with a heart condition, a friend asked her if she didn't feel bitterness toward God. Her answer was, not at all. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4.
This is Sky Harbor Elementary School, located in the Southwest Independent School District on Portside and Sky Harbor Subdivision near Loop 410 and Pearsall Road. It's brand new this year. Inside, it looks pretty much like any other schoolhouse, and the temperature inside is comfortable. But the heating and cooling comes from the sun. Located on the roof of the school are these collectors. This is the heart of the system. The panels move across the sky tracking the sun and directing the heat toward water pipes that carry 18,000 gallons of water. They're carried past those reflecting panels that bring the temperature of that water up to 240 degrees. Southwest School District Superintendent Denny Steinhauser. Uh, the system is designed uh, to uh, be 100% of the heat and cooling that we need, uh, even when there may be uh, up to eight days of a period without sunshine, we have enough storage capacity to run us for eight days, either for heating or cooling. Steinhauser said a conventional system has also been installed for backup use. The system even heats water for the dishwasher. This solar project has been partially funded by the U.S. Department of Energy. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. Publisher Jim Berg each week puts out 63,000 copies of the Lachlan Tail Spinner, the Kelly Observer, and the Fort Sam Medical Patriot. The military handles the editorial and reporting side. Berg has the advertising rights. An ex-Marine pilot, Berg keeps his hand in aviation. When he's not putting out newspapers, it's Confederate Air Force Colonel Jim Berg. In the Marines, he flew helicopters in Vietnam. Berg also flew the T-28, similar to this Confederate Air Force FM-2 Grumman Wildcat. This former Navy World War II fighter is one of 83 vintage aircraft that make up the Confederate Air Force. This one will be flying Sunday afternoon in Hondo, along with 40 others participating in the Confederate Air Force Air Show. Well, more than anything else, we try to remind the nation and uh, also try to remind our uh, fellow Americans that uh, uh, the United States got into a war in 1941 when it wasn't prepared. And we try to uh, put on pageants, not air shows, pageants demonstrating the strength of World War II airplanes uh, and how they came into being. Five days a week, he's Jim Berg, publisher. Then on the weekends, it's Colonel Jim Berg, member of the Alamo Wing, Ghost Squadron Confederate Air Force. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. Dear, are you mad? Dr. Milo, please do not call my wife mad. I did not call her mad. I merely asked her if she was. And I repeat the question. Are you mad? I hate deceit. Well, there is a time for truth. That ape in the middle, stealing the scene by twitching his face, is actor Roddy McDowell. He is presently in San Antonio, appearing in Harvey at the Fiesta Dinner Playhouse. From childhood to the present, he's been in many movies and plays. May seem odd that he would be so well remembered for a role he is so hidden in by makeup. In order that it would not appear just to be dead, but to continually, while you were acting, uh, do that the entire time. Keep the face moving. Uh, keep the face. That registered, it made the appliance move, twitch a little. Otherwise, it took that much to do. So it's like on one tape, you were just thinking of doing that, but uh, at the same time, acting whatever the acting intents were. Look for Roddy Thursday night at 8 o'clock on TV4's Thursday night feature, Planet of the Apes. May I say something personal? I like you. Hmm. I have from the beginning. Been working. Well, thank you, Roddy McDowell. <laughs> Paul Schaefer, <laughs> News Center 4. Uh, Puppeteer Kathy Burks owns and operates the Haymarket Theater in Dallas. It's the only resident puppet theater in the Southwest. Well, she brought some of her 1,800 puppets to San Antonio for the Zonta Antique Show, which starts tomorrow at Vieta Assembly Hall and runs through the weekend. The puppets will be there. <laughs>